What's up, everybody? This is like my third time trying to record a video today. I need to stop putting this off until like most of the way through Sunday. But I figured here's something I actually know how to prepare for an AWS certification. I've only been doing it for three years. All right, so this is a really good resource that I recommend. So this is IT Pro TV. Anyone familiar with Network Chuck actually also recommends them. Cannot recommend them enough. They are under the Aki Learning, bless me. So I paid for the 59 a month subscription. You can also do an annual, but I can't afford that right now. Like that's the whole reason I'm trying to get the certification so I can afford it. <laughs> anyway. We're going to do like AWS's. You can get a subscription where you just get the videos. I had that for a while, but I decided to just go ahead and pay the money. Figure it pay itself back several times over. I think this is okay to put on video to put some of the practice questions because I'm only going to do so many. I'm not going to do like a full. Also, because nobody wants to really fucking watch that maybe listen to it while they're doing other things but i don't want to edit that so y'all just gonna have to deal uh, we're gonna continue i actually did like a custom quiz and i basically just said do all the questions and just tell me as i excuse me as i do them whether they're wrong or right so your organization has recently moved its development onto aws your development team Need, teams need a scalable method to perform data protection of their file systems and large data files across various AWS services. You also need to be able to create plans for defining protection policies and applying them, apply them using tags. I didn't actually register any of that because I was too focused on reading it. Okay, let me think. Okay, so DynamoDB is their NoSQL database similar to MongoDB. Um, I'm trying to think. Ah, okay, data protection. I didn't notice backup yet. So code commit is literally part of their code pipeline. It is what it sounds like. That's kind of an obvious no. Route 53 is their DNS service. There actually are some security things in Route 53, but not particularly around, like, Protecting your entire data. If I'm not mistaken, it's more like your maybe some basic, basic DDoS protection. Don't quote me on that. So it is probably backup. Yay! The only other reason I was even considering DynamoDB is because we're actually happening to use it for. A startup I'm helping out with right now and I did remember seeing one of these other questions that DynamoDB actually does have some I think protection mechanisms oh look it's one of the few AWS services that is named for what it actually just does it's funny because you got all these fancy other names like Athena Route 53 DynamoDB AWS backup like that's the service that you know, nobody cares about the party, but everyone hires their accountant. That was a very funny joke. Moving on. Listen, these videos are just for practice, okay? Leave me alone. Alright, let's do another one. Your company wants to migrate a production of 500 gigabyte database from their network to the AWS infrastructure. It is a relational... MySQL database, and you want to leverage this experience of a solutions architect. The company needs a quick and efficient migration with little downtime. So, I actually, to be honest, I forget what EMR is. I'm trying to get this certification by summer. 
Dynamo DB, I believe, is there. Oh, no, it's the same NoSQL database. I was just talking about the last question. Uh, Redshift is the data warehousing. So it's probably not. The big thing to me is relational. So RDS literally stands for Relational Database Service. And it is actually a fairly managed database service. There's actually two main ways you can do a relational database service, at least that I've seen out in my experience, my many f three years of experience. You can actually just take your database and just straight up stick it on EC2 and just do all the management yourself. You can do that. Pain in the ass, though. Or, and then I kind of ask why you're even using AWS and not just, like, DigitalOcean. Anyway. Um, or RDS, which will manage, like, security updates. Um, I think it will automatically, like, replicate it, or you at least can make it replicate easier. Obviously, it costs a little more than doing the EC2 solution, but... Not to worry about as much shit. It is under free tier. You can do so much RDS under free tier. So. Yay! Well, he has EMAR. Big data solution and would not be a viable option for such moving such a small database. You know, it's, it's funny that now that's considered a small database because that probably back... Ah, oh shit. Probably even when I was born probably would be the way we would look at, like, petabytes of information now. Shit's weird, man. Let's do one more! If people like this shit, I'll do more of it. This video gets taken down, we'll do something else. You are a cloud solutions consultant for a legal services company. You need to ensure that your company is adhering to the various regulatory compliance laws in its AWS cloud deployment. Which of the following should you ensure for meeting compliance requirements? Choose all that apply. Oh, I fucking love these questions. Fuck me. I don't even know if these are actually even on the certification. I know when I did the cloud practitioner, I think it, they would tell you how many they could choose. Whatever. Honestly, I'd prefer the practice exams, though, to be harder than the real one. I think most people would. Keep all user data database and public subnets. Ha! That one's kind of an obvious give me. Turn off MF Ha! Unless you're one of those, like, I've been seeing some YouTubers recently that are like, you actually shouldn't use MFA because some of them are not as good as they say they should be. Or at least that's the impression I get from, I don't actually watch the videos, but the way they title the videos, it's like... Newsflash, motherfucker. Every security mitigation has pros and cons. Anyway. Perform audit logging using CloudTrail. That one kind of goes with almost without saying. CloudTrail is the service that will track all API calls, which obviously you want to do because you want to see who's accessing the data and who's fucking with it. Archive sensitive data records using S3 Glacier. Um, I think they're kind of having you read between the lines a little bit, but it's probably that one. I know Glacier specifically was made by AWS for when you have to store data and you probably will rarely access it, but you need to keep it. Um, I think... Health records for a lot of cases have to be kept for so many years. Meh. Store PI on instant store volumes. I, I'm actually not entirely sure what yet an instant store volume is. Or what security implementations they have. I feel like that's a no. I feel like you would put PII in like a super locked down... S3 bucket. So we're not going to check that. Yay! Usually you get these wrong, to be honest. Alright, what is an instant store volume? Yeah, that's like, I, like I said, you would do an S3 bucket with basically just everything set to like as locked down as possible. Not public. Uh, not even your other users on your account can see it. You can do like a compliance or a governance mode. 
You can go look up what the differences are, but it basically means you can actually set S3 buckets. You can put shit in S3 buckets and make it so not even then the root user account can mess with it. Shit cray cray, bro. Or sis. This was fun. Thanks for practicing with me. Goodbye. Goodbye.